Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Students' act of resilience, dancing with a broken ankle, leads to the early retirement of a sadistic teacher. The second story. Battle between a determined development team and an uncompromising security manager leads to unexpected consequences and the manager's ultimate downfall. The third story. Defiant employee takes a stand against her tyrannical manager, exposing her abusive behavior and ultimately leading to her dismissal. The first story is, I forced my teacher into retirement by doing the chicken dance. When I was in eighth grade, I had the terrible misfortune of being put in the class of the most sadistic teacher in the school. We will call him Mr. M. Mr. M was known for liking to watch his students suffer. I have so many stories about things he would do just to assert power over us, like giving pop quizzes on subjects he didn't teach that were designed for us to fail, or making us call our parents and tell them we had no will to succeed, and were committed to failure if we forgot an assignment. Basically, he was a P who got off on watching kids squirm. Now, not only did I have Mr. M as my English teacher, I also had him for homeroom, which meant he was in charge of handing out our report cards at the end of the grading period. So, of course, being the kind of person he was, he took advantage of this. When he gave us our report cards, he would call us up one by one to receive them in front of the entire class. If a student had passed every class, he would make us all clap for them. If a student had failed one or more classes, he would make us walk back to our desk in complete silence. This made me livid. I am autistic and often struggled in school. I failed at least one class each grading period and every time we got report cards, I dreaded being stared at. Eventually, I vented about this to my older sister, who happened to at the time be in college getting a degree in education to become a math teacher. She was disgusted by this especially because unbeknownst to me, sharing the status of a student's grades to their peers, positive or negative, without written permission is illegal. With her help coaching me on how to report him, I brought what he was doing to the attention of the school principal, who was furious at the news. She asked if I had other students who could confirm he was doing this. I did. In fact, a good chunk of the class was happy to let administration know about everything Mr. M had been up to. I still don't know how the principal handled the situation, but he definitely got at least a good talking to because he never did it again. However, I guess word got to him that I was the one who had brought up the initial complaint because for the rest of the school year, he was out to get me. Fast forward to the end of the year. As the teacher who had been at the school the longest in our year, Mr. M was in charge of organizing the eighth grade field trip. It was tradition that every year he would force the eighth grade class to do the chicken dance and film it. He even made us watch the footage of the previous years so that we knew it was coming. The day of the field trip comes and it isn't that special. We got to miss class, go to the park and eat pizza. As the day comes to a close, we hear the teachers announce that we have five minutes to make it back to the pavilion. Me and most of the other students start running back across the field, knowing they'd be serving the pizza soon. Halfway across the field, my foot gets caught in a hole in the ground and I feel a snap from my ankle. I start wailing and my friend sees me and helps me to my feet and half carries me back to the pavilion, me sobbing the whole way. She sets me down on a bench and I prop up my ankle and she runs to tell his teacher that I was hurt. But before she can say anything, she's cut off by Mr. M, announcing that it's time to do the chicken dance. She goes to a teacher and is blown off and ignored and told to join the other students or she'll be written up. At some point while lining up the students, Mr. M notices that I'm still sitting in the pavilion on a bench and marches over demanding that I get up. I tell him that I hurt my ankle and that I think it's broken. He takes one look at my sock covered foot and says I'm lying. I tell him I can barely stand. He demands that I get up or he will make sure that I'm put in isolation for the remaining week of middle school. Eventually I give in and I hobble down the hill with everyone else, sobbing and limping. The whole time he makes his dance, I make a show of it, tears streaming down my face. Me pitifully trying to dance on one leg, holding on to people for balance the whole nine yards. Eventually, after about 30 seconds, one of the other teachers comes over and stops me and asks what's going on. I tell her I think my ankle is broken. She asks, if it's broken, why are you trying to dance? I tell her how Mr. M threatened me and that I just wanted to spend the last week of school with my friends. She guides me away and sits me down. By this time, my ankle is starting to swell noticeably. I pull off my sock and she can see the skin starting to turn a purple bruise color. She's horrified and helps carry me back to the bus and gets me some ice. When the rest of the students get on the bus to leave after eating, they pass me in the first row, my broken ankle elevated on the seat. The teacher who helped me, 
We'll call her Miss A, sits with me the whole ride back to the school, and her and another student help me get to the nurse. My mom leaves work early to get me and take me to the emergency room, where they confirm my ankle is indeed broken. A pretty nasty break, too. The next Monday, she brings me into school, and we head straight for the office and demands to see the principal. She has me tell her the whole story. My friend and Miss A corroborate and my mother immediately threatens to hire a lawyer and sue for abuse and endangerment. After an hour of motherly tirade, the principal manages to calm my mother down and says it will be taken care of. In the meantime, I take the day off and stay home. I walk into homeroom Tuesday morning on my crutches, and Mr. M isn't there. In fact, he didn't come back for the last week of school. I find out through the grapevine that he retired early, and I know the administration probably made him in order to avoid a lawsuit. Mr. M was not that old, maybe about 50, and could have easily gotten another 10 years in before he retired. Still to this day, I have a chronic pain in my ankle, and I even have to walk with a cane at times. But honestly, I'm just happy knowing that a-hole never got to subject another class full of kids at that school to his sadism again. The next story is... Security tells me no. Okay, it's no. I work for a subsidiary of a Fortune 500 as a manager of a dev team. I have seven people under me. Think L3 people. Very knowledgeable and driven to solve issues. We're all remote. I'm lucky my team is mostly great, and we achieve the objectives we're given. One day, the new security manager decides that devs are not allowed to be administrators of their laptops. He writes a new company policy for it. It's an SH show for us. It means my team can't work on some applications that require administrative rights. Also, as devs know, some bugs need my guys to install, deinstall, and reinstall the applications many times to make it work, changing only a few parameters each time. So I try to push back saying it might impact our service level agreements, but the security manager doesn't want to understand and just sends me emails with no in bold caps. His boss is AFK for health reasons, so I can't escalate as I would have. The only way to make my guys work is that we need someone with the admin rights to unlock them when they need it. The admin is part of the support center, so cue malicious compliance. I ask my team to create a ticket each time. They're not happy about it, of course. The support center manager isn't happy either, because we create a lot of tickets, and his team has been understaffed for a while. I also tell all the other managers in my department to do the same, and even though they create a lot less tickets than my team, it helps. Of course, this is my plan. If my team is unhappy, other people in the company are going to be too. So pressure piles up. The support center manager is unhappy. His boss saw the numbers increase too, so he's unhappy too. He talks to my boss, but hey, I have emails from the security manager. The support center manager asks me to be reasonable and asks for a number of hours per week. I'm a team player, of course, so yes, I want to help him. I ask for 20 hours a week for a guy from his team to sit around waiting for my team to need him. Unlock their install and then wait some more. I'm guessing the admin is pretty happy about it, because it's way less pressure than his normal job, and there's not much to do but type in an admin password once in a while. It helps reduce, or not increase, the number of tickets. But the support center has less people, so they resolve less tickets than before. Then comes the climax. One application has a critical bug outside of the hours of the support center guy. So I tell them, as per my agreement with the support center manager, and obeying the security manager, my team can't work on it yet. We'll have to wait till the next day. It's a healthcare product, so it means a lot of our customers are going to be upset about it. I can't say too much. Don't want to be found out. Of course, I'm a reasonable guy. The support center manager is too. So we find someone with admin rights and put my guys to work. The resolution of the ticket takes much longer than usual to solve because of all the back and forth between the admin and my team. During the post-mortem, it's found that the new security policy was the main delaying cause. Every member of my team told the post-mortem woman that, as did I. I have all the emails I sent the security manager highlighting the risks of the new policy and him saying he didn't care for it. I sent that to the post-mortem woman and let her find her way in the politics. Three months later, the security manager doesn't work for us anymore. And most of my team members, but not all, have admin rights on their machine. I learned that the support center manager has made his mission in life to complain about the security manager to everyone who would listen and have him fired. And the support center manager knows a lot of people in the company. His director agreed with him and with the post-mortem woman, or her boss, not sure at that point. They convinced the VP to fire the security manager even before the security director came back from his health issue. The last story is, why wasn't I at my desk? I'll tell you why. About 15 years ago, I worked in a large hospital for kids in the maintenance department. Our manager, let's call her Karen, was a major B. 
No one on our team liked her and we outwardly showed no respect for her after her constant harassment towards us in the two years she worked there. She would call us on the maintenance radios and be rude or tell the guys they were being incompetent. It was beyond micromanagement but also rude on top of it. She expected the maintenance guys to come do work at her house for free or would tell some of the hospital vendors she would guarantee the hospital contract if they did work at her house for cheap. She used to brag about this to me. Karen and I were the only women in our department of about 25 people. I was a mouthy 20-something year old and didn't care for her attitude and would regularly say, yeah, sure, whatever, when she asked me to do things. I would do what she asked because it was my job, but I would have made a non-committal remark like that. One time she asked me to come to her house and help her pull down her dead trees in her backyard since she was having a pool installed. I said no, mainly because I wouldn't do it for someone I liked, let alone her, and pretty soon after she started treating me even worse than she did before. She had been trying to get me in trouble since then, such as CCing her buddy in HR on emails to me asking for status on projects that I was working on and wanted my replies in writing. Fast forward six months later, me and one of the maintenance guys were chatting in the office and I was five months pregnant with my first baby. She asked me to do something, I don't remember what, and I said, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll do that in a few minutes. And I turned back around to talk to my coworker. She's standing behind me and I hear her whisper, I wish I could slap the SH out of you. I can see my coworker saw her say it too, and I made no comment, but I was shocked. I acted like I didn't hear her though. She left the office a minute later to do something. I get up and walk down the hall to employee health department because I'm fuming, and my heart was racing, peeved. Also five months pregnant. The EH nurse has me lay down for a bit, takes my vitals, writes up a formal report. An hour later, send me back to my desk as an okay to continue working. When I log back in, I see an email from Karen with HRCC asking where I had been for the last hour as she called the office phone a bunch of times and had abandoned my desk. So I emailed her back. I apologize for being away from my desk. When you said you'd like to slap the SH out of me, I was so upset I had to be calmed down and have mine and my baby's vitals checked at employee health. And they were concerned about my hostile working environment and wanted me to stay there for the full hour. I made sure I BCC'd her buddy in HR and all of HR, her boss and his boss to make sure everyone saw it. I was summoned to HR about 30 minutes later. I knew Karen hadn't seen my reply yet. This was early 2000s and her computer was down in the office near me. They had me go home for the day and put me on admin leave for three extra days. I came back to the office to see her desk had been emptied out and we never saw her again. Those guys in maintenance threw me the best baby shower ever three months later. Edit. A lot came out at the HR meeting, and I sure did tell them all the things she bragged about. Every single coworker backed me up too. I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and have a good day.